In the deep sea, you're not on the ground just because you stopped sinking. Peacetime is hard times for mercies like me. I used to be grateful for every job, no matter how boring or senseless it was. It's part of my routine to provide protection for supply boats and transports. It was my job to guard a sulfur shipment heading from the Gulf of Bengal to the Argentine Basin. Now, sulfur isn't a particularly attractive prize for pirates or anarchists. So I got to wondering why a protective convoy was necessary, especially since there'd been few pirate attacks recently. The captain of the transporter insisted on taking the slalom route through the Malay archipelago, crossing the South Pacific so as to round Cape Horn. I thought maybe he wanted to give himself and the crew a little entertainment in the pleasure domes of the Malay archipelago. A few oars, some surface simulation, who knows? I had nothing against the idea. We passed south of the domes and headed straight for the South Pacific Basin. They came at us from every direction. A torpedo exploding close off my bow jolted me from my daydreams. A small fleet of fighter boats under the flag of the Shogun encircled us. It probably wasn't monarchists, just bandits from the tornado zone. As a greeting, they sent us a flash shark, which penetrated the outer wall of the freighter and knocked out its electrical system. A hungry swarm of bull sharks was after me. It's no fun in a fix like that if you've only got a dilapidated boat with one firing tower. The automatic finder picked out the approaching torpedoes and sent them to the bottom one after the other, while the only thing I could do was fire a few feeble thresher sharks against the agile boats. Then three things happened at once. My location system failed, an explosion astern set my boat rolling, and a smart shogun bomber, flashing painted teeth, appeared, hovering right in front of me. I might have known that she was behind it all. My own personal nightmare from the depths of the tornado zone. I closed the valves on my suit, crawled into the escape hatch, and angrily jettisoned my lifeboat with a blast of compressed air. And not a second too soon. My crippled boat rolled over and sank into darkness as the grinning bomber strafed my titanium capsule with a salvo of hard-cased shot. One glance at the freighter confirmed what I feared. Two enemy boats had docked on. The crew was being dealt with already. Before I passed out, I thought of my failure, and I wondered why the hell the anarchists needed sulfur so bad. came to, freezing on a cold metal floor, and I didn't know which was sharper, the features of the woman or the blade of the knife she threatened me with. She was a Russo-Japanese named Hung Lung, which means Red Dragon. A long time ago, in a penal colony in the Sea of Okhotsk, I slept with her. But at that moment, feelings of nostalgia stayed deep. She was the enemy, always had been. I defeated her once in a fight at the edge of the sandwich trench and spared her life. She's like me. And our paths have crossed often, and she's always my enemy. We didn't talk much. She said it would be child's play to slit my throat, but the world still needed me now that evil was reaching out of the depths. I don't know what she meant by that, but it was the first time I ever heard fear in her voice. The Ronin didn't kill me. She did the same as I had done at the Sandwich Trench. She gave me a tank full of breathing gas and expelled me from a lock into the ocean. The breathing gas had almost run out when an Atlantic ore freighter picked me up. They brought me to the Argentine Basin, where an unpleasant meeting with my employer was waiting for me. That's where this whole damn business started.
Magellan, extraction of biogenic sediments, 5,423 meters. Vespucci, extraction of biogenic sediments, 4,988 meters.
Power surge detected. Target destroyed. Sonar red pilot available. The ship that this junk dealer foisted off on me didn't offer a lot of comfort. It wasn't particularly agile, but it was lightly armed, and to my surprise, it was watertight. I wasn't in a position to make many demands, because I just screwed up a pretty good job. I picked up Perry LaSalle, who was seething with rage, and on his way to see my employer, El Topo. El Topo, the mole, so named because he hides his eyes from the light, except when it comes from the surveillance monitors in his dismal mountain fortress. The mole is a powerful force behind the scenes, and he has access to the most important power centers in Aqua. I was sure that here I'd find out what was really on board that freighter. Topos Asylum, El Topos Fortress, 2,826 meters. Thank you. 
Sonar ready. Topos Asylum, El Topos Fortress, 2,826 meters.
sonar ready. Navigation point reached. Target lock. Target lock. Power surge detected. Navigation point reached. Get locked. Asylum, El Topos Fortress, 2,826 meters.
phone already. Target lock. Spooky. Extraction of biogenic sediments. 4,988 meters.
first surge detected. Sonar ready. Target identified. Magellan, extraction of biogenic sediments, 5,423 meters. Power surge detected. Target destroyed. Sonar ready. Power surge detected. Target locked. Target destroyed. Autopilot available. Vespucci, extraction of biogenic sediments, 4,988 meters. Point two, jump star, one thousand thirty six meters. Entrox has a worldwide monopoly on jump ship manufacturing and technology. 
Up to now, nobody's been able to explain to me how they managed to accelerate their jump ships, ships as long as 500 meters, to an underwater speed of 500 miles per hour. Among other things, the ships have a so-called dipole drive, an endless chain of series-connected electromagnets that charge the water molecules alternately positive and negative, setting them in rotation. An extensive system of vanes offers the attack surface needed to convert the energy of rotation into shear energy. If it weren't for the ships and the network of jump points covering aqua, the world wouldn't go round anywhere near as fast. No wonder El Topo is trying to break Entrox's monopoly. Fast transport, as well as the production of breathing gas and energy, are almost entirely in its hands. If Entrox's boss ever got a notion to close up shop, chaos would rule over Aqua. Enter point six, jump star, 923 meters. Surge detected. Eastern edge of the tornado zone off the coast of South America, the busy anarchos have closed off a rock cave in the continental slope and filled it with Helinox breathing gas. Atacama City, it's called. The dream of every inhabitant of Aqua who yearns to feel solid ground underfoot once in their life. In this chaotic labyrinth of rocks, pipes, and tunnels, I expect to track down El Topo's informer. Most likely in a bar serving cold girls and warm beer. Atacama City, Cave City, 5,285 meters.
detected. Avenger, mining of blue silt, 2,540 meters.
Power surge detected. Sonar ready. Target locked. Surge detected. Point six, jump star, nine hundred twenty three meters. Lima 2, mining of phosphorus. Lima 1, mining of phosphorus, 1,728 meters. Sonar ready. Sonar deactivated. Target lost. Power surge detected.
Navigation point three autopilot available. Atacama City, Cave City, 5,285 meters. Power surge detected. Navigation point reached. Target locked. Target locked. Target on Target locked. Target lost. Target locked. Detected. Target, Target locked. Target locked. 
unlocked. Target lock. Target destroyed. Mining of phosphorite, 1,728 meters. Avenger, mining of blue silt, 2,540 meters. Lima 2, mining of phosphorus, 2,282. Atacama City, Cave City, 5,285 meters.
We're on our way to one of the most exciting places in the tornado zone. The station's off Galapagos. Apart from their inventive minds and their unscrupulousness, the inhabitants of the tornado zone have two principal sources of income. Harvesting mineral-rich manganese nodules and producing synthetic protein around the sulfur-rich volcanic vents off Galapagos, which reach 350 degrees Celsius. Giant tube worms and mussels contain bacteria that can process sulfur and produce carbohydrates out of carbon dioxide and water. The bacteria, in turn, form nourishment for the mussels, worms, and crabs, which are the most cheaply produced animal proteins. Protein is highly valued and much in demand in aqua. The director of this part of the tornado zone, Ivan King, is a tough customer. He wants higher prices for protein. That's why he's holding a fully laden freighter from Bentos Unlimited here along with the crew. It's my job to change his mind. Galapagos, hot vent station, 2,483 meters. Riftia, hot vent station, 3,289 meters. Hot vent station, 3,530 meters. Power surge detected. Target 
destroyed. Power surge detected. Power surge detected. Target identified. Target lost. Target destroyed. Power surge detected. Target lost. Caution torpedo. Target. Navigation point reached. Autopilot available. Mock Turtle 1. Hot vent station. 3,826 meters. Mock Turtle 2, Hot Vent Station, 4,355 meters.
Center Point 7, Jump Star. 1,139 meters. Riftia, hot vent station, 3,289 meters. <laughs> Turtle One, hot vent station, 2,826 meters. Galapagos, hot vent station, 2,483 meters. Turtle One, hot vent station, 3,826 meters. Hot vent station, 3,530 meters.
ready. Navigation point reached. Target locked. Target locked. Vent station, 3,289 meters. Poseidon. Crater under Chris Kruger. Power surge detected. Target locked. Poseidon, crater under Chris Kruger.
Neapolis, capital of the Atlantic Federation, home of freedom, democracy, and unfettered money-making. On the eve of the 600th anniversary of the ocean settlement, it's gleaming with spit and polish like the inviting entrance of a whore tank. For me, it's too clean, too safe. You always know what the next day will bring, and the citizens are so content they've completely forgotten they're locked up a thousand meters deep in a gas-filled terrarium. For me, freedom means more than just the right to inhale all the lavender-scented Elianox I want. Neapolis, capital of the Atlantic Federation, 2,202 meters. Sonar ready.
propulsion torpedo. Target lock. Draft 1. Mining of mineral oils and sulfur. 4,585 meters. Draft 2, Mining of Mineral Oils and Sulfur, 4,585 meters. One residential station, two thousand four hundred twenty six meters. Point nine, jump start, one thousand forty three meters. Thank you. 
Power surge detected. Target not. Capital of the Atlantic Federation, 2,203 meters. Target locked.
target lock. Target locked. Target locked. Target destroyed. Target locked. Target locked. Target identified. Target locked. Target identified. One residential station, two thousand four hundred twenty six meters. Torpedo ready. Deactivated. Power surge detected. Target locked. Power surge detected. Ready. Target Power destroyed. surge detected.
Torpedo ready. Target locked. Target locked. Target identified. Detected. Target destroyed. The Atlantic Federation, 2,203 meters. Residential station, 2,426 meters. Target lost or deactivated.
Power surge detected. Sonar deactivated. Sonar ready. Target sonar locked. deactivated. Power surge detected. Sonar ready. Target locked. Residential station, 2,426 meters. <laughs> Neapolis, capital of the Atlantic Federation, 2,203 meters.
Deep draft two, mining of mineral oils and sulfur, 4,585 meters. Corps, freighter under Captain Bullock. Behind the giant locks in the Strait of Gibraltar hides the greatest collection of human trash in all aqua. Under command of the notorious Captain Sorrow, they are an army of outcasts. Criminals and terrorists hunted all over the world. They meet here to plan raids, piracy, and terrorism. To kill a monster of this size, best thing to do is knock off its head. I'll bet anything Sorrow's band of marauders and cutthroats will scatter over the seven seas if they lose their leader. But it's not just a matter of taking Captain Sorrow prisoner. The entire fortress needs to be knocked out, preferably in one stroke. Limbo, pirate outpost, 326 meters.
326 meters. Granagar, pirate bases, 1,140 meters.
Target locked. Target locked. Target locked. Target destroyed. Limbo, pirate outpost, 326 meters. Sonar ready. Power surge detected. Mission target reached. Other pilot available.
Spermagon. Pirate faces. 1,140 meters. Sonar ready. Power surge Caution torpedo. Pirate faces, 1,140 meters. Sonar ready.
Power surge detected. Target locked. Caution torpedo. Target lost. Caution torpedo. Caution torpedo. Caution torpedo. Caution torpedo. Target identified. Target destroyed. Power surge detected. Pirate faces, 1,140 meters.
C Corps, freighter under Captain Bullock. detected. Target 
destroyed. Target locked. Target Navigation locked. Target reached. Target identified. Target locked. Target locked. Power surge detected. Target identified. Target destroyed. Torpedo ready. Target locked. Power surge detected. Target identified. Target destroyed. Torpedo ready. Target locked. Autopilot available. That's about it. Aqua's been liberated from one more legend, the cutthroat Captain Sorrow. Sea Corps, freighter under Captain Bullock.
Target locked. under Captain Bullock. Floating Bombay. The people of the clans union from the Arabian Indian sphere primarily care about beautifying their existence. They're masters of rare arts like underwater painting, and they have a thorough understanding of how to raise swarms of shining bioluminescent fungal spores. But it's not just the culture of beauty they've mastered but also the culture of communication. 
And when it comes to the clans union and communication, that means trade. Here you find everything from secret dipole drives for fighter drones to the latest weapons and weapons guidance systems. The bazaars of the floating city are bursting with technical achievements from the remotest corners of Aqua. They say that in floating Bombay, you can buy a smuggled weapon before it's even invented. <laughs> I've never heard it denied. Floating Bombay, capital of the clans union, 1,287 meters. Ganesha Wan, quarrying of red deep sea clay, 5,254 meters.
Scheherazade's world, leisure complex, 1,820 meters. New Babel, Leisure Complex, 1,632 meters. Ganesha Wan, quarrying of red deep sea clay, 5,254 meters.
Power surge detected. Caution torpedo. Target destroyed. Sonar ready. Target identified. Target locked. Target lost, power surge detected. Bombay, capital of the Clans Union, 1,287 meters.
Mission target reached. All pilots available. Point twelve, jump star, one thousand eighty three meters. <laughs> Sheherazad's world, leisure complex, one thousand eight hundred twenty meters. Leisure complex, 1,632 meters. Star of Bengalia, freighter under Yala Ranjum. The e-channels and e-papers are all talking about one thing, the cataclysmic undersea quakes near the Macquarie Ridge in the southern Indian Ocean. The first reports tell of thousands of dead. The jump star was completely destroyed, making immediate assistance impossible.
The strange thing is this. They've got a sophisticated warning system, but it wasn't able to predict the catastrophe, and there weren't any aftershocks. Many of the tabloid broadcasts are reporting that strange objects, which could only have come from the surface of the Earth, destroyed the entire station with the effect of a massive bomb. I don't believe it. The surface is dead. Nothing living will ever come down to us, and we're never going up there again. Star of Bengalia, freighter under Yala Ranjun. Navigation point reached.
The Star of Bengalia did its best. After the incident with the strange cruiser, every minute counted for getting aid to the victims of the horrific undersea quake. But what had happened? Nobody on the Star of Bengalia had ever seen such a ship. When it was directly over us, we didn't hear anything except a powerful vibration. All of our electronic gear shorted out as if we'd sailed into a powerful magnetic storm. Kong Lung had spoken of evil from the depths. It became clear to me that she must have meant what we had here, because it was like nothing I'd ever seen. And whatever it was, it sure hadn't come to preach the gospel of peace. Star of Bengalia, freighter under Yala Ranjun. <laughs> Bengalia, freighter under Yala Ranjun.
Ajanta 2, mining of ores, 2,943 meters. Ajanta 1, mining of ores, 3,500. Sonar ready. Navigation point read. Power surge detected. Target lock. Target identified. Torpedo ready. Target lock. destroyed.
Target lost. Target destroyed. Autopilot available. You could look on the Machina Antarctica as a sort of outpost of the Tornado Zone. Except that here, it isn't lively anarchy that dominates, but rather that dull, problem-solving atmosphere common to all peak-headed technocrats who never look over the edge of their test tubes. Ever since Boris Santiago's mercenaries abducted the ingenious scientist Fritz Rasmussen and put him to work in the manganese nodule fields of the South Pacific, the atmosphere here is drearier and more uncertain than before. The chief scientist, Victor Barnhelm, a melancholy man who puts his faith in technology, is familiar to me only from a few noteworthy interviews in which he gravely predicted the end of gas-breathing humans and the rise of liquid-breathing fishmen. I've heard from El Topo that that crazy Barnhelm has already created a prototype of the liquid-breathing artificial human he calls his Homo Aquaticus. Machina Antarctica, refuge of the technocrats, 4,633 meters.
Sonar ready. Target locked.
target lock. Torpedo ready. Mining of phosphorite, 3,570 meters. Target identified. 
target lost. Mining of ores. Five thousand three hundred forty six meters. <laughs> Little Paris, residential station. 780 meters. Enter point three, jump star, 933 meters. <laughs> Little Paris, residential station, 780 meters. Sonar ready. Oh, 
propulsion torpedo. Target identified. Target locked. Target destroyed. Target identified. Target locked. Target destroyed. Torpedo. Target destroyed. Target locked. Torpedo. Target identified. Target identified. Target locked. Target destroyed. Makina Antarctica, refuge of the technocrats, 4,633 meters. Mining of ore, 5,246 meters. Little Paris, residential station, 780 meters.
Enter point three, jump star, 933 meters. No matter what a civilized man thinks of the amphibian Vincent Lefebvre, he's got a vision. His idea of slotting me in as manager of the famous sex-charged Glow Z on board Santiago's Big Fat Mama was carefully thought out and put through. The crew of the floating fortress needs some diversion, so it seems I'm guaranteed to be received with open arms. Once I'm aboard the mega freighter, I shouldn't find it hard to enter into Santiago's service. That'll let me keep an eye out in peace and quiet for Fritz Rasmussen, who's being held captive. And if need be, I can put Boris Santiago and his whole pompous floating imperial court out of action. Central point five, jump star, 1,077 meters.
Cape Fury, processing of Mangan Lump, 2,593 meters. Drift, processing of mangan lumps, 3,183 meters. Processing of mangan lumps, 2,837 meters. Power surge detected. Sonar ready. Sonar deactivated. Power surge detected. Power surge detected. Caution torpedo. Power surge detected. Target lost. Power surge detected. Target lost. Target lost. Sonar ready.
Power surge detected. Target lower pilot available. Cape Fury, processing of mangan lumps, 2,593 meters. Sonar ready. Target locked. Power surge detected. Target locked. Target identified. Surge detected. Freighter under Borre Santiago.
sonar ready. Power surge detected. Target lock. Power surge detected. Target identified. Target locked. Target locked. Target destroyed. Navigation point reached. Navigation point reached. Target Target locked. Target destroyed. Power surge. Target locked. Power surge detected. Target identified.
Fat Mama, freighter under Borre Santiago. Hawaii, processing of mangan lumps, 2,837 meters. System breakdown imminent. Mission target destroyed. All pilot available. Big Fat Mama. Freighter under Borre Santiago. Drift. Processing of mangan lumps. 3,183 meters.
Power surge detected. Are ready.
point reached.
Target ready. Target ready. Target lost. Power surge detected.
Torpedo ready. Sonar ready. Triton, Battleship of the Atlantic Federation.
Target lock. Target identified. Target destroyed. Surge detected. Target destroyed. Torpedo. Target lost. Target destroyed. Battleship of the Atlantic Federation. Cape Verde rise, all hell is broken loose. An armada of mutinous mock soldiers is threatening the Digastation there. That by itself would be enough reason to get angry, but General Cox is afraid that the rumor is true, and a fleet of the Shogun's warships is headed there as well. If so, they'll be entering the territory of the Atlantic Federation for the first time in ages, which would amount to an open declaration of war. The diggers are the pariahs of the world's oceans. Their job consists of digging up the palm layer, that sickening mass of dead organic particles that covers the surface of the ocean. 
Most importantly, exploitation of these particles produces the much needed nitrogen which fertilizes the farming facilities. The diggers work so close to the surface that they're exposed to high doses of radioactive radiation, which is in turn responsible for the frequent appearance of mutations in their ranks. All over Aqua, people disparage the diggers, the mutants, and treat them as lepers. The adherents of the Mok cult want to wipe the diggers out to the last man. In their warped view, the palm layer represents the personification of the god Mok, and every digger harvest is a wound to his divine body. The Shogun government is also in a state of permanent war with the diggers, whom they regard as serious competitors in nitrogen production. Attacks on Digastationen by the Shogun's boats or by bands of monks are a daily occurrence in Aqua. The leader of the Cape Verde diggers is Theodore Brown, a revered, telepathically endowed mutant they call the Great Magician Merlin. At the moment, at any rate, his magical powers are failing in the face of impending military annihilation, and a more effective protection seems to be called for. Triton, Battleship of the Atlantic Federation. ready. Oh. 
destroyed. Target locked. Power surge detected. Caution. Torpedo. Target identified. Target destroyed. Caution. Torpedo. Target locked. Target locked. Power surge detected. Station, 426 meters.
sonar ready. Target locked. Surge detected. Target lock. Station, 426 meters. <laughs> Triton, battleship of the Atlantic Federation.
Battleship of the Atlantic Federation.
Root System Breakdown and Target Identity Destroyed. Target Destroyed. Battleship of the Atlantic Federation. Battleship of the Atlantic Federation. The top command of the Atlantic Federation has sounded a war alarm, and on the monitors of the bridge, we continually receive horrific reports from the Red Sea. The situation has become more desperate. The attack of the monarchist troops on the Station of the Cape Verde Rise seems to have been a diversion. The main target of the Shogun government appears to be the Red Sea, which is under the territorial regime of the Clans Union. There are unbelievable natural resources there. Petroleum, diamonds, gold, platinum, and the titanium that's critical for the construction of boats and stations. The first attack wave of the army of the Shogun government is over. Under the command of General Tsui Akira, the monarchists are carrying out a brutal massacre of the protection force of the Atlantic Federation. Polar, battleship of the Atlantic Federation. <laughs> Sonar 
already. Target locked. Ship of the Atlantic Federation.
Sonar ready. Target locked. Caution, navigation droid.
The monarchists can make life hell for you. Every mistake is fatal. The fighter pilots face a considerable challenge maneuvering in the shallow waters of the strait, and the threat from radioactive surface contamination only makes it that much worse. As if it weren't bad enough that we have to deal with a powerful armada from the Shogun government, now we're in the line of fire of some of the Bayon's cruisers. Four, battleships of the Atlantic Federation. point reached.
destroyed. Target locked. Target destroyed. Target locked. Battleship of the Atlantic Federation.
sonar ready. Ship of the Atlantic Federation.
one already. Power surge detected. Battleship of the Atlantic Federation.
sonar ready. Navigation point reached. Sonar deactivated. Power surge detected. Target lock. Mission target reached. Autopilot available. Polar, battleship of the Atlantic Federation. We're underway to the Mariana Trench, the deepest valley in the world, summoned by a Biont alarm. The monarchists operate their geothermal power station in the trench, converting magmatic energy from the Earth's interior into electricity. The geology of the Earth's crust is particularly unstable there, and Admiral Wojciech Ping suspects the Biont's are trying to exploit this fact to set off an undersea quake. News has come through that the raging battles in the Red Sea have cooled down. An undersea quake of catastrophic magnitude destroyed the stations and habitations of the clans union in the Arabian Sea. No survivors. I've seen it before. The right displacement of the Earth's crust and a powerful tsunami arises, stirring up the sea, sucking the polluted surface layers into the depths. No one can survive. It's becoming clear that these undersea quakes are not just whims of nature. 
The Ronin Kung Lung called the Bayans evil from the depths. The Moks talked of the growling from the depths. I'd bet my last credits that they're right. The undersea quakes are being intentionally unleashed. The devil only knows what machines the Bayans have that can mobilize the very crust of the earth against the people of Aqua. jobs that take me into Shogun territory. Years ago, I supposedly insulted his majesty, and after a rigged trial, I was sent to a penal colony in the Sea of Okhotsk. Thanks to the Ronin Hunglung, I was able to escape. Nobody has ever seen the Shogun Emperor Lung in person, but that simply makes him the most powerful phantom on earth. He is feared, loved, and honored by his subjects, though some are said to be dissidents. It seems to me as if everybody here is in lockstep. For the strong ones, there are only two courses. Climb as high as they can in the officer's corps, or run. Zvesta Vostok, capital of the Shoguns, 1,649 meters.
Raoul Vostok, mining of ore, 5,387 meters. Vilnia Farm, farming station, 1,022 meters. Xiao Vostok, mining of ores, 5,387 meters. Sonar ready. Target locked. TV Center 23, Jump Star, 1,202 meters. Best of all stars. Capital of the Shoguns, 1,649 meters.
some are ready. Torpedo ready. Navigation point reached. Target locked. Target locked. Vostok, capital of the Shoguns, 1,649 meters.
are ready. available. The best of Vostok, capital of the Shoguns, 1,649 meters. Ready. Target lock.
Torpedo ready. Target locked. Target locked. Battleship of the Atlantic Federation. Challenger, geothermic power station, 5,402 meters to 10,039 meters. Say, mining of ores, 6,822 meters. Progress, research station, 822 meters.
are ready. Torpedo ready. Power surge Target detected. Locked. Navigation point reached. Target identified. Target identified. Target locked. Target identified. Torpedo ready. Target locked. Ready. Target locked. Target identified. Target locked. Torpedo ready. Target locked. Target identified. Target locked. Target Target locked. Progress. Research station, 822 meters. were clever. Not even our smallest robotic rescue unit can dive that deep. A slightly built man might just be able to squeeze inside, but nobody could breathe down here at a pressure of 1200 atmospheres. It would take too long to design and build a machine that could take over rescue operations in this abyss. I've got an idea. Challenger, geothermic power station, 5,402 meters to 10,039 meters.
I'm sitting with Admiral Ping in the research station of the Challenger area, looking at the blurred documentary film of the evil, designated by military personnel at the naval base as Serbian. Serbian. Surviving Union is the name of the bioelectronic entity off the coast of Australia, which has entered into a symbiotic union between organic and mechanical electronic substance. Its boats form a single gigantic neuronal network, the center of which lies in the command center off Australia. That's why they're so hard to combat. The Biomps don't steer their boats, they are the boats. Sooner or later, we'll have to stab directly into the Servian's bridgehead and destroy its command and guidance center. Progress. Research station, 822 meters. Battleship of the Atlantic Federation.
Sonar ready. Torpedo ready. Navigation point reached. Target locked. Target locked. Torpedo ready. Target locked. Power surge detected. Torpedo ready. Target locked. Power surge detected. Search detected. Target lost. Mission target point reached. reached. Autopilot available. The waterman has no shoulders. He's genetically constructed to allow fluid forward motion in water. He breathes gas or liquid equally well due to his gill lung membrane breathing system. His rib cage collapses according to the pressure at a given depth, compressing the volume of the lung wings down to a few milliliters. All gases have escaped from his bodily systems. He breathes an oxygenized and heliumized solution of carbon located inside his thermal dive suit. It took a while before we got the signal from below. The waterman had secured the bomb to the cable. We slowly started to pull it up. Done. Incredible relief. 
The helium of our breathing gases never smelled better than it does now. Polar, battleship of the Atlantic Federation. Target locked. Target number search detected. 
Battleship of the Atlantic Federation. Topo has organized the transportation of troops from the Atlantic by jump ship. Floating Bombay was the locus. All available fighting units of the Atlantic Federation, of the Shogun government, and of the Clans Union are on their way to pay their respects to Serbian's bridgehead off the coast of Australia. The scientists suspect that the central guidance unit of the Serbian is in the center of a tube protected by several concentrically arranged rings made of an unknown titanium ceramic alloy. It doesn't look like it'll do any good to destroy the individual protective walls with heavy fire from the plasma cannon. The center, the innermost heart, is almost certainly secured by separate mechanisms and could probably withstand the blast from an H-bomb. However, if we can set off the seismobomb in the immediate vicinity of the center, there's a chance we can annihilate the Serbian bridgehead. Of course the Bayans have been expecting us. They've formed around their center in several defensive rings. Our ponderous battleships won't have an easy time against the mobility of their units. The plan is clear. Our side must breach the Bayans' defensive rings with smaller fighting ships and try to briefly disable their biomass and electronics with a massive blast of the EMS weapon. If we throw everything we have at them in a blistering assault, our battleships can press forward and engage the heavy Bayant cruisers. They've all come. The Mole under Captain Colosimo, the Shinto One with Admiral Wojciech Ping on board, the Star of Bengalia under the command of Yala Ranjun, and the Polar with Captain Lopez and Admiral Pika. Polar, battleship of the Atlantic Federation.
surge the Power surge detected. Target identified. Torpedo ready. Target locked. Target destroyed. 
Target locked. Target locked. Target lost. Ship of the Atlantic Federation.
sonar ready.
get lost. breakdown imminent.
destroyed. Power surge detected. Target locked. Power surge detected. Target locked. Target Target locked. Target destroyed. Target locked. Target destroyed. Target destroyed. Target
kayaknya Ship of the Atlantic Federation. ready. Target 
Target lock. Target destroyed. Target locked. Power starts to finish. Torpedo ready. Target locked. Target locked. Power starts to finish. Target lost. Target locked. Power starts to finish. Target lost. Target lost. Target locked. Target locked. ready. Target locked.
target lock. Target locked. Caution, system breakdown imminent. Target destroyed. Navigation point reached.
flagship of the Atlantic Federation.
Torpedo ready. Target lock. Target lock. Target lock. Torpedo ready. Ready. Target locked. Target
quantum breakdown imminent. ready. Target locked.
Power surge detected. Battleship of the Atlantic Federation. Navigation point reached. 
Power surge detected. Target locked. Point reached. Power surge detected. Surge detected. Target identified. Target locked. System breakdown imminent. Autopilot available. That's the way I'll always remember the brave Ronin. Grinning into the heart of hell carrying with her the most powerful bomb of all time. Amazon, Piratus, Anarchist. The Red Dragon brought the steel heart of the monster to the melting point. The moment she was gone in the shock waves of the raging plasma, I missed her. The mighty shock waves of the exploding bridgehead set our heaviest battleships rocking like helpless jellyfish. Water began to boil from the energy that was released. Water that for fractions of a second took on the consistency of salty gel. It hissed and bubbled, precipitating its mineral components to the bottom of the sea.
The gases that had been set free rose in mighty, glistening orbs towards the surface. The surface that we certainly would never see. The wild, unknown surface, corroded by poison and radiation, an unattainable paradise of hellish dangers. For some, the epitome of archaic horror. For others, a lighted beacon in an endless quest for lost origin. I gave General Cox a tired salute and signed off. The Triton sailed with the other ships to home waters while I spent a moment in the darkness, listening to the faint echoes of the last battle won. destroyed the Servian, at least that part lying beneath the surface of the sea. Our scientists suspect a significant portion of the bridgehead lies on the continent of Australia itself. Perhaps we've met our own future in the Bayance. Perhaps we and they would have learned if there had been any readiness to do so. But when was learning ever long in the mind of any species?